Hi everyone, welcome to the Mount Diablo United School District Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. My name is Catherine and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. This is one of many college presentations being offered tonight, so feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded, including this one, and will be available at strivescan.com slash MDUSD. We are currently in session B3, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentations. So without further ado, we're gonna kick it off to our first representative from Biola University. Unfortunately, American Jewish University is not able to attend tonight, but feel free to contact the rep, uh, American, American Jewish University directly for any questions or concerns you may have. Again, the, next, the first representative is from Biola University. Good evening, everybody. Hopefully you can see uh, the screen in front of me. Uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Veronica Alvarado. I'm one of our assistant directors of admission at Biola. So I, I have the opportunity to be able to share a little bit about us. Uh, I am an alumni of the university, but I want to just go ahead and start off by sharing my position. So I'm an assistant director of admissions at Biola. I have been working there for five years. And you know the fact that I've been there just goes to show how much I really value uh, the education that Biola provides for our students. So, you know, to start off, um, location-wise, Biola is located in La Mirada, which is on the border of LA County and Orange County, but we are a private Christian university. And, you know, what makes, it, makes us unique as a private Christian university is the fact that all of our students, staff, and faculty are professing Christians looking to live missionally to um, what we're all about, which is to impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, an education at Biola can be summarized into three values, which you see right in front of you. Um, first is the integration of Christian faith in our learning. And we see that mainly through teaching our students to think biblically about whatever, store, uh, whatever field of study that they're being called to. Second is their spiritual growth and development. And then lastly is community. So, you know, we have a, a community of about 4,000 students coming from all over the world, you know, looking to be uh, developed both academically or academically, spiritually, and socially. We know that that can be, you know, as a future filmmaker, as a psychologist, as a neurosurgeon, a teacher, or, you know, whatever you feel like is the area that you are choosing to pursue uh, professionally. So, you know, for us academically, one of our goals or our main goal is for our students in the classroom to know or to grow in knowledge, but to also be known um, in their classroom. So we have a student to faculty ratio of 14 to one. Our students are provided with, you know, faculty who are experts in their fields um, and who walk alongside our students in, you know, as students are pursuing internship and career opportunities. Um, we're very intentional about keeping our class sizes small with about 72% of our classes being under about under 25 students or less. And for us, you know, we don't see students as just another body in the seat. We see them as individuals who are looking to be seen and known, 
but are who are also motivated by our professor and the relationships that we have with these professors to be able to contribute in class. Um, Biola has been ranked as the best national university by US News and World Report. And this just goes to show, especially to our students, you know, you're guaranteed to grow in an academically rigorous environment and to also grow in confidence of, you know, what you're learning and what you're applying to your life um, beyond the classroom. And, you know, for us, we also see that it, as students are growing academically and in confidence, um, that just goes to allow them to pursue these uh, internship and career opportunities that are allowing them to gain experience and are leading to our students, about 80%, 87% of our senior students finding success six months and even up to um, a year, 87% of them finding employment opportunities in their fields or even in pursuing master's and doctoral programs. So in the same way that you know, students invest into Biola, Biola invests back into our students as well. So in over you know, 80 programs that we have available in our majors or in our minors, we know for a fact um, that our, our institution is investing into, into centers that are uh, focused on growing in STEM, in cinema and media arts, and in areas where we know future generations are passionate about. And so we would love for you to be able to experience that for yourself if Biola ends up being a place that you consider being a good fit during this, um, this period as you're considering schools for fall. Um, you know, whether you're immersed in opportunities as a student leader, or if you're transformed by the words of an influential speaker in the classroom, or even in a Bible class or a chapel service, and even in your own community service, we are looking to equip you to make an impact in culture. So, you know, we are equipping our students to be the best version of themselves, while they're also glorifying God in that. So, if all of this sounds like something that you personally are interested in, then we want to let you know that the next steps would be to apply to Biola, get connected, and commit to Biola. So you can start an application now. Uh, our application has been open since July, so you're, you're right on time. And we have three application deadlines, uh, early action November 15th and January 15th which is a non-binding uh, admissions deadline, and then the regular deadline for March 1st. Um, now, here are the requirements for our students who are interested in Biola. You must, have, you must be coming from a Christian faith or background, have at least a 3.0 unweighted GPA, SAT of 1,000 or ACT of a 19. However, due to um, COVID, we know that that's not going to be an opportunity for our students, so we have waived that. We ask you to submit a personal essay as well. So know that if you are interested in following up with us, you can do so by contacting your admissions counselor, Brian Glaze. Um, and then you can also ask for questions later on towards the end of our session too. So thank you everybody. Awesome, thank you. The next representative is from Point Loma Nazarene University. You are on mute. I'm so sorry. Hi everyone, my name is McKenna and I am the admissions counselor at Point Loma Nazarene University. Um, I am also an alumni. I graduated a few years ago uh, in 2018 and I'm happy to be back in this role of coming alongside you guys who are working on your applications or just starting to think about applying. Um, a little overview of what our student body looks like. Point Loma is located in San Diego, California, and um, right on Sunset Cliffs. We have 93 acres of oceanfront property, um, which is a great place for our students to call home. We have a capped enrollment university of 2,700 students in our undergraduate programs. 
um, and an average classroom size of 23. So it is a small university similar to Biola and what you just heard um, previously. We really value the smaller classroom sizes and find that this um, opportunity for our students just to have access to their professors um, and really be a name, not a number, is something that is super impactful um, in their educational life and their personal life too. So our student to faculty ratio is also 14 to one. All of our students or all of our classes are, are taught by Point Loma professors, no um, teacher assistance or anything like that. You're getting your information directly from your professor. Some um, accomplishments and programs that we like to highlight, um, there are many, there's over 60 non-impacted areas of study. And basically what non-impacted means is that students um, don't have to fight for a seat in a program or a class. And that really ensures a four-year graduation rate, um, which is a pretty big deal nowadays as more and more schools aren't able to call themselves four-year institutions anymore. Um, we're grateful to be able to graduate 91% of our students in four years. So our, of those 60 areas of study, our top five most popular are what you see here on the screen, nursing, business, pre-health, kinesiology, and education. I will say upfront that nursing is our one and only impacted major. So that's our only major that we can only admit a certain number of students into. It's also one of our largest and one of our most popular, um, and we have a great um, accomplishment from this program that 90% of our nursing students are passing their NCLEX exam right away on the first try and heading into um, a really great nursing career. Our business students, um, there's seven different uh, concentrations in our business department um, that you can focus your education on. Pre-health includes any student who is wanting to head into a medical profession. Um, we also have a 90% acceptance rate for students who are going on to a medical school um, after their undergrad at Point Loma. We're also ranked top 10 in California for our CPA exam results. That's a part of our um, accounting students in the business school. And then our kinesi kinesiology and education departments are some of our most popular as well. And they also have great graduate programs in Point Loma um, graduate school too. So you can actually work towards your master's degree and your um, education credential as a undergraduate student and tack on as little to a year, even less um, extra to, to get those credentials um, after your undergrad. Outside of the classroom, we have some great opportunities of people who are here to support you um, and come alongside your time at Point Loma. Our career services office is um, very traditional in the sense that they are 100% here for you when it comes to finding internships, creating a resume, getting connected with our alumni who are all throughout San Diego and beyond. They also take a really personal approach to each student um, as you navigate these four years and trying to decide what is next and um, even sometimes decide on a major. They take a very personal approach to each student and really give the support that the student needs to answer those questions and have some good career coaching and strengths training as well. Our study abroad office is another great um, opportunity for students to have a, a international multicultural experience. We are happy to say that study abroad is back after a year plus of not being able to send students abroad. Um, we are being, we're very excited to do that again. And we actually have a um, national rate that is nine times higher um, for students who study abroad um, at some point in their um, education at Point Loma. We have lots and lots of things to get involved in, too many to fit on a slide and too many to talk about in six minutes. But really what I want to say and share is that there's something for everyone at Point Loma, um, whether that is the arts or um, more invested in your major and department or serving the homeless or um, serving on our chapel stage, club sports, anything like that. Um, ev someone, everything, everyone can find something to do at um, Point Loma to get involved and find some community outside of the classroom too. It's very easy to get involved um, and almost everyone has something that they are kind of have their feet in outside of the classroom. 
We have nine different residential um, opportunities on campus, and most of our students stay on campus all four years, which is an unusual stat for a college um, as well, but most of our students love to take advantage of the community as well as the oceanfront property um, that Point Loma can offer. And last but not least, you can apply now as well. We have our deadline coming up November 15th, and you can email me more with any questions. Great, thank you. We really appreciate it. Just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those through the Q&A button at any time during the session. Our representatives are here and available to answer any questions you have. The next representative is from Samuel Merritt University Health Sciences. Hello. Can you all hear me? I've been having some audio problems earlier. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to share my screen. You're already sharing. You're good to go. Oh, am I? Oh, good. Okay. So let me get the correct. All righty. Or maybe. Am I? I'm maybe sure. not. Uh -huh. Maybe it's just your background. Uh, I don't know. Can you yeah. like do this? I'm just going to work from this in the, the essence of time. I don't want to take up too much time because my presentation's already too long. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if it's helpful, we can go ahead and jump to uh, uh, bump you to the end and then we can go ahead and keep rolling okay. if you yes, want to would be troubleshoot. Great. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. We're going to go ahead now and jump to the next representative from the University of St. Diego. Okay. Well, you guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. Um, my name is Scott Yonner, one of the admission counselors at the University of San Diego, as well I oversee Northern California. So more than likely, if there's any seniors that are being applying, I'll be the one that will be um, reading your application. I have a daughter who just graduated the University of San Diego, and I am also an alum with the graduate program. So a little bit about USD. Uh, we are a private Catholic institution. About 40% of our students identify with the Catholic faith. The remainder of our students either identify with a different faith background or no faith background at all. The only religious requirement we have is one lower division, one upper division, religious theology studies. Other than that, we do not require students to go to mass, nor do we require them to be part of the campus ministry. But if you're looking for those opportunities, we have an amazing campus ministry. Uh, they're super engaged on their campus, but in the local community, they do a lot of work in uh, Tijuana as well, with it being about 30 minutes away from our doorstep. So we're a mid-sized institution. We have about 5,500 undergraduates, 2,500 graduate law students on campus. About 48% of our students are out of state. 7% of our students are international. The remainder are from the state of California. About 41% of our students identify as being students of color. And we are consistently ranked in the top 10 in the nation when it comes to most beautiful campuses. Uh, this past year, we were ranked sixth in the nation. If you ever have the opportunity to be able to visit us, you know exactly why. We're up on the on a hill. We overlook sort of Pacific Beach. We're about 10 minutes away from the beach, 12 minutes from downtown and the airport, five minutes from Mission Valley and from um, Old Town. So we're very centrally located, central located as well. So we offer 41 majors at USD. USD is a little unique because regardless of your intended major that you put on your application, everybody comes in undeclared. You have up until your fourth semester to declare your major, double major, major minor, major double minor. You're guaranteed in any of our majors, and you don't have to apply. So you automatically can, uh, if you want to do a double major outside of discipline, you could be a business major and an art history major and still graduate in four years. Now, there is one exception. That's our engineering majors. And by design, it's a four and a half year long program. And that's because our students will actually graduate with both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science. They get a dual degree with that. We are ranked 13th in the nation when it comes to our School of Engineering. We also have great pre-professional advising, so pre-med, pre-law, pre-dental, pre-ophthalmology, pre-veterinarian. These are not additional majors or minors, but what they are is their pathways to make sure that students meet all the prerequisites needed to apply to graduate school from internship opportunities to undergrad research opportunities. 
uh, to preparing for your MCAT, your DAT, your LSAT, your GRE, or whatever test you, test you got to take between your junior and senior year. Another great component about USC is just the fact that our average class size is 21. So my daughter's largest class in four years was 33. Her smallest class was 12. So if you're looking for that environment where you're looking to be able to collaborate not only with your peers, but as well have access to your professor, uh, mid-sized institution is maybe a great uh, option for you to be able to consider. Uh, all of our courses are taught by professors, so you'll never be taught by a TA or a GA. Our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one, and we are the youngest private institution in the top 100. So we feel uh, very proud for how we've come a very long way in a very short period of time. Uh, as well with student research, one of the reasons why our pre-med students um, are very, very successful when applying to graduate or to, uh, to medical school is that for all of our science majors, biology, chemistry, behavioral neuroscience, you're guaranteed a minimum of 100 hours of undergrad research. This is done with the lead professor. If that research is published, students are co-authored with it as well. Uh, outside of science, we also have additional opportunities for undergrad research. And that's because at USD, with our professor's primary function being to teach, concurrently, a lot of them are also engaged in research. So I know of art history majors, engineering majors, business majors, uh, psychology majors have all had the opportunity to be able to do undergrad uh, research as well. We have a great honors program. I'm not going to go into it just for the amount of time and stuff, uh, but we have a first year experience. So we do require students to live on campus for the first two years. They're living learning communities, so they're sort of theme based. Uh, Maybe if you're passionate about social justice, you may consider advocate. If you're passionate about sustainability, cultivate. So what's nice about that is sort of a common thread throughout that everyone has in common that's part of that residential hall. So a lot of great things with that. We also have over 180 clubs and organizations on campus. So maybe you might consider learning to surf and be a part of the surf club or be a part of the gardening club or one of our 30 plus cultural organ multicultural organizations or one of our 65 plus uh, honor and professional societies. So once again, a lot of opportunities. We do have nine sororities and nine fraternities, 17 division one athletic programs on campus, plus over 50 club and intramural sports. As well, we're one of 42 campuses in the world that's designated as an Ashoka Changemaker campus. Uh, this is our ongoing commitment to social justice, social innovation, entrepreneurship, sustainability, and global perspective. We're also ranked fifth in the nation with our study abroad participation. We have over 80 programs in 30 different countries. We even have a um, campus in Madrid, Spain, which is really popular. Well, my daughter did her study abroad. She went to Cork, Ireland. Uh, with that being said, we're common app exclusive, regular decision, December 15th. We don't have early action. We don't have early decision. All students will be considered for merit when you apply. Uh, our application is also test free. So we will not look at, nor will we require you to submit your ACT or your SAT since we are a test free institution. We will make our decisions based upon academic um, excellent, your change maker qualities and your personal qualities. With that being said, my time is up. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to the next presenter. I'll throw some information in the chat as well. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of the evening. So much great information. Thank you. The next representative is from the University of San Francisco. Hi, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. My name is Natalie Moreira Ramirez. I'm one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions here at the University of San Francisco. And like many of our panelists here today, I'm also an alumnus. So we certainly are excited to share a little bit more about USF. It is in our name. We are in San Francisco, California, not that far from many of you that are here in the Contra Costa area. Uh, we are one of 27 private Jesuit Catholic institutions here in the US. And that is a mouthful. So what does it mean to be Jesuit ed educated? Um, what that means for our students is that we have a commitment to explore, engage, and improve the world around us. So we do that through offering our students to be able to think critically about how are they going to use this education, these opportunities that are going to be afforded to them through study abroad, internship opportunities, networking. How are you going to put that forth and put that back into the world and into the community around us? Because we certainly know that the community around us always needs and uh, needs to be battered for for all of us secondly we also want our students to think about community so while you're here in our core curriculum you'll see that we have 
the city of San Francisco as an extension of our classroom. So you will be taking community engagement courses that require you to go out onto the city of San Francisco and learn from our environment. And then last but not least, a commitment to diversity. And so when we speak about diversity, it's not only speaking about ethnic diversity, and certainly that is very important, but we're also speaking about diversity of faith. Although we are a Catholic institution, only a little less than half of our students identify, self-identify as Catholic. We have 21 different faith religions represented amongst our student body, a diversity of languages. Last census showed us we, have, we had about 45 different spoken languages, student representation from 49 different states, 82 different countries. So you are certainly going to see people that are similar to you, but also very different. And that really does enrich everyone's education. Everyone has something to contribute to our community. Where in the city of San Francisco are we? Because I think our name then invokes memories of maybe you all exploring downtown Market Street or the Westfield Mall, Golden Gate Bridge, you know, these really beautiful areas of the city of San Francisco. We are right in the heart of the city, the geographical center. We're in this beautiful community called the Inner Richmond, which allows our students to really be able to focus on their studies, create those meaningful friendships and relationships with their faculty members, but as soon as you step off our campus in any which direction, you are immersed into the city of San Francisco. So for example, here you'll see we're about a 10 to 15 minute walk from Golden Gate Park. You'll see the Academy of Sciences, De Young Museum. There are live bison in the park. Um, you'll also see Painted Ladies, Japantown, Off the Grid, just so many different places for our students to explore, engage in their passions, their interests, try something new. If you're passionate for social justice, community activism, dance, theater, music, it's all very much around us and here for you to enjoy while you're here, whether it's two to three years if you're transferring or we have you for four years. So many opportunities to get engaged. Now, not, let's not just only focus on fun and leisure, but also think about the professional development opportunities. We're fortunate that the Bay Area has so many different thriving industries for our students to tap into, have internship opportunities during the academic, uh, academic year or over the summer. So it really does allow our students to start to get, create an idea of where they feel they're gonna be the most, most uh, the, have the most ability to be agents for change. And so we have the city of San Francisco to enjoy and our students really do love that. You'll see a QR code here. So if you have a smartphone, feel free to scan that and it will take you to our website where you'll learn a little bit more about the advantages of living in the city of San Francisco. Now, just more stats uh, and figures about the university. So we are considered a mid-sized college. We roughly have about 5,800 undergraduate students. We have three different schools from our students to choose from. The College of Arts and Sciences, by far the largest one, has over 40 different majors, anything from engineering to communication, Spanish studies, degree, biology, psychology, kinesiology. So a variety of different majors under the College of Arts and Sciences. The School of Management is the second one. That one has about seven different majors to choose from. You'll see entrepreneurship, finance, accounting, hospitality management, international business. And then last but not least, our School of Nursing and Health Profession. We do have a direct entry nursing program. So for those interested, I will put in the chat a link to all of our majors and minors so that you can check those out while we're talking here. But I highly recommend to explore some of our programs, see what classes you can look forward to. We have highlights of our faculty, alumni. Um, you could look forward to being in different research studies, clinical sites, so a lot of information there for you. We have about a 55 acre campus that you saw in that map. So our students are able to enjoy two years of on-campus housing guaranteed, which is where we're super excited to be able to offer. We opened a brand new residence hall this past August. And so our students are certainly enjoying living in the heart of San Francisco. We were ranked number one at, in the country as one of the most ethnically diverse campuses. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a deep commitment to diversity. And you'll see that through the representation of our students, staff, and faculty. We have small classroom experiences. So for those of you that might want to be looking, might be looking for that smaller classroom environment, our average class size is about 23. There you'll also see more about applying to be a Don. You can scan that QR code and I look forward to hearing from you. Awesome, thank you. Just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen. 
If you have any questions about the college application process, or even if you have a specific question for any of our schools represented here tonight, we encourage you to include the school name. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from Samuel, Samuel Merritt University Health Sciences. Hello again. <laughs> um, again, my name is Tonette Green and I am with Samuel Merritt University. Um, and I will be talking about um, Samuel Merritt. I'm trying to share my screen here. Unfortunately, it's asking me to download something and I don't want to download. I just got a new laptop, still working from home. So I don't want to download and I lose everybody. So I'm going to present from this screen and I hope that's okay. Um, so again, we are Samuel Merritt University. We are located in Oakland, California. So just over the bridge from, um, from University of San Francisco. Um, probably about 15 to 20 minutes away. Um, and we are a smaller private university. Now, when I say small, we don't offer a whole lot of programs. We are a health science school. Many people, they get us um, confused with Merritt College, which is the, um, the junior college, but we are Samuel Merritt University, an all health science school. So the programs that we offer at our um, school is um, bachelor's. We only have one bachelor's degree um, and it is a bachelor's of science in nursing. We have uh, what we call an ABSN or an accelerated bachelor's of science in nursing, a master's of science in nursing, an RN to BSN. And we'll talk a little bit about these um, later, um, or if you want more information, in-depth information about what they are, then please contact me and I'll put my information in the chat box. Um, entry level to Master of Science um, in Nursing, FMP or Case Management, Physician Assistant Program, that is a master's level, Occupational Therapy, Physical Therapy, that is a doctorate program and a doctor of podiatric medicine, so a podiatrist or a um, um, foot doctor. And then we also have a doctor of nursing practice. So again, as you see, we are an all health science school. Um, so I took a different approach because we don't have a whole lot um, of programs or sports teams or things like that. We have smaller class sizes. Um, and each program um, that admit have different start times and different application deadlines. And as a high school student, you wouldn't come directly into Samuel Merritt, although we do have the one um, nursing, bachelor's of science in nursing, it is a continued program. So you would have to do your prerequisites somewhere else at a junior college or elsewhere, and then transfer into our program. So, um, nursing, what is a nurse? A nurse is an educator. It provides patients with health promotion, counsel, and, edu and they also educate. They administer medications, wound care, and health interventions. They coordinate patient care um, collectively with other members of the health care um, team, and they can also supervise um, staff such as LPNs and nursing assistants. So the types of nursing degrees that we offer are the bachelor's of science in nursing. Again, you'd have to um, go elsewhere and complete two years and then transfer in. Um, we have an ABSN, which is an accelerated bachelor's of science in nursing. That's for in, an individual who has a bachelor's degree already. And then they decide that, you know what? I don't wanna be a lawyer in law. I wanna do, um, I want to be a nurse. That's my calling. So they can come back with their degree. As long as they have the courses that are needed, they can do that um, program for one year and um, take what we call the NCLEX to become a nurse. And the NCLEX is a state exam that you, you would need. We have an RN to BSN. That's for individuals who maybe want to go 
to JC and do their nursing program there, you'd get an ADN, um, which would be like an associate's degree and then transfer um, to our RN to get your bachelor's degree. We have a, um, again, an entry level, um, uh-oh, entry level master's of science in nursing. And I'm not gonna go through all of these just because in the essence of time, I didn't know that I had six minutes. So um, I don't wanna sound redundant. Okay, so master's of science in nursing and a DMP, which is a doctor of nursing practice. Um, how to become a nurse for our pro at SMU, you would need to, again, do your two years somewhere else and then transfer in to our program and um, take what's called a HESI exam. And that's like an, a, a, it's an assessment before you apply to nursing school. That's just one of the exams that you would, um, that you could take if you're applying to the nursing program. Um, some schools accept what's called the T's, we accept the HESI. Um, and then you would, after you graduate, you would sit for what's called the NCLEX. And that's one month after graduation. And then that would make you an RN. Um, and then we kind of went over the ABSN. I already have your bachelor's degree. Get in for one year and then um, go on to take the NCLEX and become a nurse. All right, so as a high school student, if you are looking to get into any of the healthcare programs, really, um, this one specifically nursing um, that I'm speaking of right now, you will want to make sure that, you know, you are academically sound. That when you get into college, whether it be JC or four year, you're going to go and um, you're going to pay attention in your sciences, right? That's what you can do to prepare now. Um, you wanna focus on your math and your science preparations and you wanna develop those strong writing and communication skills. Um, also, you wanna develop relationships with academic faculty and professionals and healthcare professionals so they can write you those good letters of recommendations. And then also if you're doing everything you need to do, um, in school, that HESI admission exam is, I, wanna, I don't want to say it'll be a cakewalk because not everybody's good test takers, but it'll be a little easier um, because you'll already have your reading and comprehension skills, vocabulary and general knowledge, grammar, math, anatomy and physiology, and, but it can be taken twice. Great, thank you. It's a great place to uh, end. And so at this point, we do have some time left. And so we're gonna pivot now into our Q&A portion of this session. And so I invite all our representatives at this time to go ahead and turn on their cameras to get ready to unmute themselves. And our first question here is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented in. Alrighty, so some advice that I would give to a student who's going through the college search process. Um, yeah, is do your best to not allow um, a price or a yeah a price tag to be something that affects you from applying to a school um yeah like you know the college search process you you go on a, you go on a website you search up on a school um you go to the part that says like apply but once you get to that section that says you know financial aid or what the cost of tuition is it's really easy to shut down because of you know the price, like the sticker shock price of it, or um, so what I would just suggest is, you know, be willing to apply to a school, buy your FAFSA. It's almost October. So even more of a reason to stress that a lot more right now, buy your FAFSA and know that like applying to a private school or just any school that you're applying to, 
think of scholarships like coupons um, in, a, in a way where, you know what, here's one discount after another discount. Do not allow what you see on that screen to be the end all be all of why you're not gonna apply. Don't sell yourself short by saying no to something when we're trying to say yes to you. So um, yeah, as somebody who was a first generation college student, that was my fear a lot of the time. So don't, don't allow yourself to worry about that. Look at the, the, the price tag, but still apply. Later on, scholarships, all of that will come down along the road, but don't be afraid to reach out to the admissions office if you have that opportunity to advocate for yourself. Please do it, please do it. All right, I think I'm next. My advice would be um, to go visit the schools that you're interested in. And similar to what Veronica just said, um, don't let the cost or your maybe preconceived ideas of the school hinder you from really looking at the school and the campus and the people and trying to decide like, could I be here for my four years? Um, ask a lot of questions. That is why we are here as admission staff to come alongside and answer your questions. So um, feel free to reach out. And then my last piece of advice is just take some pressure off yourself. Um, this is, you're only going to do this once in your life and it's a really exciting, fun time. Um, there is a school out for, out there for you and um, take the pressure off to find the perfect school because odds are you're going to end up at a great place and have a really good experience wherever you end up. So enjoy it and have fun and ask for questions. I think I would follow up on that. Um, even if you're not able to visit the campus, let's say you're looking to an East Coast school or maybe a school that's in the Midwest and you know you're not gonna be able to get there. You guys have enough campuses nearby? Go to a mid-sized institution, go to a large institution, walk on, what's it feel like? Are you enjoying it? Make sure you reach out, like it's sort of that demonstrated interest. So those colleges that are sort of your top two or three, uh, go online if you can't visit them, uh, attend a virtual presentation to learn more about the school or fill out sort of an info card so that you're in the system. It's just one of those ways that will show that demonstrated interest. And I think the other thing is, is that as you're going through, enjoy the ride. I think what we can was saying is just, this is a great time of your life. Uh, where I see students stress the most are those kids who are applying to like 15 different universities and uh, colleges. And maybe that's your plan, but that's just an excess. That's just so much stress on you. Uh, knock it down to, you know, a good eight or nine schools that will give you plenty of choices to be able to figure it out and see what is sort of that best fit. And that would be my input for you is like, make this fun as you go through it. And if you can walk on the campus too, cause you'll know in five minutes if you like it or not. And if it's your first choice and you don't like it, you'll be really glad you did. But if not experience something that's similar to be able to sort of help you see if that would be a place that you would enjoy as well. Hopefully I'm coming through because my internet's a little um, not cooperating with me today as I'm sure all of us are familiar with that sentiment. Um, my recommendation, especially for our first generation students joining us today, um, don't feel pressured to have to know how it all goes. Um, certainly there's gonna be a lot of support through your high school counselor, admissions counselors, but you're not. there's no steps for you to follow. There's no one that came before you that can really help you with this. So please do lean on us because we do want to help you. Um, we want to be able to make sure that you're not only making a great choice in terms of fit, but financially as well. And then also looking at opportunities for you to be able to maximize those scholarship opportunities, opportunities to, to study abroad, because there's scholarships for that as well. So lean on your admissions counselors, lean in, into your high school counselors, and then know in the end that whatever is meant for you is gonna happen. And don't feel peer pressure to have to compare your experiences to your peers. Everyone has a unique college experience uh, and you're gonna enjoy it once you're there. I'd like to just kind of echo um, what all of uh, my colleagues have um, have said, um, don't feel pressure to know exactly what you want to do, 
But if you are, because I am Samuel Merritt and we are all health sciences, but if you do know exactly, you know, if you're one of those kids that knows, you know, I want to go into healthcare, I know that I want to do, you know, X, Y, and Z, don't feel afraid um, to reach out to those schools talk to the counselors, schedule appointments. We love to hear from um, students who, um, you know, are just kind of on that path. It's, it's easier to direct you when you're on that path rather than when you get there and you've already veered off to the left and you've taken wrong classes. So um, don't be afraid to reach out ask questions, but again, for the masses, it's okay if you don't know exactly what you wanna do. But um, if you, um, you know, go and shadow people, if you don't, if you don't know, um, ask, for sh ask for shadowing opportunities, talk to people that you think that you might wanna be like, um, and that's it for me. And a great way to end. Um, thank you for all the great advice so much. Um, and I think we can all walk away with something. So um, again, we appreciate all our representatives being here for sharing some great advice, for sharing about the respective institutions. Um, thank you for your time. And thank you to each of you for joining us. Um, as we close, there'll be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback is greatly appreciated. Also, there are more sessions happening. Feel free to sign up for more sessions. You can check out the entire schedule on the website. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded, including this one, and will be available at strivescan.com slash M-D-U-S-D. Thank you all. Have a great night. And we have now reached the conclusion of this session.